On today's vlog, we tackle a disconnected long bob. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Two, three. What's up guys welcome to today's vlog today we're going back to doing women's hair i've been really enjoying putting out the men's cuts i do have a couple more to put out but i didn't want to just do men's hair for you guys so today i had a request that request was from b willy style on instagram thank you for sending the request i actually really dug the haircut that you pointed out so here is the look so what we did was we cut a precision cut underneath and then we disconnected the lob on the top. We gave it a really nice A-line feel to the haircut, so I think you guys are really gonna enjoy this cut. Definitely uh, salon friendly, you'll be able to use it. We also went back to using the carving comb, so I think you guys are gonna enjoy that as well. We did precision cut with our DB20 scissor, and then went in with the carving comb to finish the cut up. I think you guys are really gonna dig it. Let me know in the comments below if you like the haircut. Love doing these videos for you guys. Thanks for the support, and make sure you share this video with all of your friends friends let's get started all right guys so today's haircut we're gonna have a lot of fun it's a cool technique what we're gonna do is cut a precision underneath so I want to section off the top first so what I did was I followed the part line which is slightly to the left side of her head and then I go down to low crown and then across I don't go all the way down to the occipital bone I want it to have a little extra um, density in the bottom for the bottom structure part of the haircut. So I go to the low crown and then diagonal forward down to behind the ear. I do that on both sides. That separates the top and the bottom of the haircut. So the bottom portion from the crown down, that's going to be our precision uh, feel to the haircut. We're going to start by taking a vertical section straight down center back. That's going to be about a half inch, uh, maybe a little bit more than a half inch wide. You don't want to go too wide on that section because that can really throw off your guideline as you're working across. So um, I'm going to start by going a nice high elevation. I don't want to build up too much weight. The, what tends to happen uh, when somebody cuts more of a precision underneath um, and they're trying to stack it up is the bob gets too stacked, too much density build up, too much weight, and then it just kind of has a weird mushroomy effect to the haircut. So I wanted it to fall nice and sleek, especially with those disconnections that are going to fall over later. So you could see that elevation is nice and high. Um, and then as I work down, I kind of follow the round of the head. I'm, use, I'm leaving, not using, leaving a little bit of length at the bottom so you'll see that kind of tail out at the bottom. We're going to cut that off after we blow it dry. So I don't want you guys to think that it's going to be really long in the back. We're actually um, deciding how much weight we want to leave and then we'll decide the length later, which is a great technique. Any bob that you're cutting, you could go through and do that because it's going to help you um, kind of decide how much density you want first. Think about when you're cutting the back of the head, decide the density, then decide the length. So a lot of times we cut right away, we cut the bottom, and then we go through and we try to build um, the density and the elevation and how we want that graduation to look. We try to do it all based on how we cut the bottom, but that's not always the best way to do it. So I'm going to go through, you can see that little hole that gets built in there, but I'm going to take off that back uh, when we get this back finished. Now, uh, to keep my body position the same, what I'm doing now is scooping with the comb. So I was pulling everything towards the center, uh, combing over top of the section. Now I'm combing kind of underneath the section, scooping my comb around using the uh, nice fine teeth of the comb. I'm also using my DB20 scissor. This is the scissor that everyone asks me, what's your favorite scissor? The Mizutani DB20 5.7 inch scissor. It's definitely my all time favorite at this point. And I'm going through and using that for my precision cutting. So now a lot of people ask me, why do I hold the scissor the way that I just did? I'll probably do it again right here. Um, I do it all for comfort. So right now I'm using high elevation, so I don't need to do that. But then once I get down a little bit lower elevation, um, it just it's a lot easier. It's more comfortable for me and I get a more consistent cut when I flip the scissor down and I kind of I put my thumb in the opposite direction in the scissor. So everything's coming straight back to me at this point. Slight bit of over direction, not too much. Um, it'll push a little extra weight forward. But we're cutting a nice even back uh, right now. 
So there you go. That's the back of the haircut. Now I'm going to go through and blow it dry. I'm using a Paul Mitchell 413 brush. It's a nice vent brush. I it's A lot of people use this brush. You're probably using one in the salon as well. Uh, it's a really cool brush. It's got, it allows the air to flow through it so it doesn't keep the hair nice and flat to the head. Uh, and I have my Ergo blow dryer as well. Then we go through with our Vibra Straight Iron. I'm going to iron it out. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, why didn't he finish the rest of the haircut? Well, we're going to do all that with a razor. So I wanted to go through, finish the back precision cut, and then treat the other part of the haircut as a completely different haircut because it really is. So we're going through disconnecting. Um, I comb. I use my comb tension when I cut the back of this haircut, and I just work my way through the back. Still using the DB20 scissor. Thing I love about the DB20 scissor is the nano powder metal, uh, which I've talked about before. It really allows the scissor to grip the hair and cut it. So I go through, I cut my line, um, get my nice precise line in there, and then all that hair is gonna fall over top of it to create that disconnection. That's what's gonna make this haircut really unique and stand out. So you can see the graduation that we created, taking out the weight first, then deciding our length after is a really cool way. And I hope you guys use that in the salon and let me know uh, when you do and what you think. So now we're gonna use our carving comb. This is a tool that I'm in love with. Uh, we have it on our website. Also gonna pair it up with the Donald Scott Prepare, which is a liquid tool glide. It allows the razor to just glide through the hair as I cut it, um, keeps the hair nice and conditioned. A lot of people are worried about damaging hair, but not with the, with the carving comb, you don't have to worry about that. So I'm gonna go through using nice wide strokes with the razor, but you could see how low my elevation is. With a razor, you don't have to raise up the elevation too much because I use nice wide strokes with it. But I also, I keep the elevation down and the length longer. Um, so I'm not using my guideline from the graduation that I cut in the back. I'm creating a brand new guideline to have those longer pieces kind of showing through. And what I'll do is I'll show a picture of um, the haircut that this is kind of uh, the inspiration for this haircut came from. And what I love about it is it had all those disconnected pieces kind of hanging over the precision part. So um, that was really where the inspiration for this whole thing came from. So I'm going through just over directing everything slightly back, low elevation, but just using the 100% cut side on the carving comb. This is the first time you guys are seeing a carving comb. The, the cool thing about this tool is that it has a 100% cut side and then a 50% carved side. So you can go in and you can just notch out some layers, which we're gonna do in a second as well. So now we're gonna go in, use that 50% notch side, same over direction, but just sliding that through once and it'll take out 50% of the hair, create some layering, some movement, and some texture in that haircut. So now we're gonna use our Bricado Mousse. This is one of my favorite mousse uh, that I use. Um, I've used it in a lot of videos that you guys have watched so if you've been following along for a long time. It's a really cool product. It's also available on freesaloneducation.com. And uh, it's just got a really good thick feel to the foam, really conditioning feel, but it's not sticky and that's what I really like about it. All right, now we're really working the style here. And what I wanna do is I wanna show you guys how it looks when it's more straight feeling, and then also how it looks when it has a little bit of a wave to it, like the picture that was shared. So um, we're gonna go through, we're doing a flat wrap uh, with the 413 brush, adding that air in, but wrapping the hair one way around the head and then going back the opposite way, really removing all of those calyx from the head. A lot of people um, talk about how do you prep hair for dry cutting, all of that. We're not going to do dry cutting in this because I did the razoring, but if I were going to prep the hair for dry cutting, I would do this flat wrap technique because it allows the hair to lay in its most natural form. Any of you guys out there that aren't hairdressers that are watching this just trying to learn the style of the haircut or get inspired to show your hairdresser uh, this look as well, think about the fact that if you have trouble with calyx or anything in the morning, you could use that flat wrap technique to just go back and forth and work your way around the head and um, you'll work out all those calyx in your, in your style. So now I'm going through medium hold hairspray from Bricado, and you can see how seamless that falls. Even though we have that disconnection in the back, I love the way this looks. It collapses the long hair, so you can keep the length in the back. You can keep those longer layers, but it definitely takes out the weight underneath. Now we're going through with our fat iron. Uh, I think it's an inch and a half iron from Paul Mitchell just ironing back off of the face 
and I work through just really fast using a wide tooth comb. That's our 332 comb. Um, and I just finished the style that way, a little bit of firm hairspray, but you could see that wave and that kind of how it kicks over the disconnection. It's such a cool look. Hope you guys like it. Let me know in the comments below, hit the subscribe button. I got a ton more videos coming your way. All right, guys, if you like this cut, remember hit the like button, hit the share button, share this video with all of your friends and also go to freesaloneducation.com. Check out all the cool stuff that we have to offer, uh, including tools if you want to purchase those. Thank you guys for watching these videos and always supporting. Hit the share button, share this video with your friends, and uh, thank you for watching. All right, thank you guys so much for watching the video. It's officially raining. I'm gonna go inside.